Hey, I'm Coach Colin Castello with Shot Mechanics Fastball. And today, I'm going to give you the blueprint to shoot like James Harden. All right, so James Harden is having a phenomenal season. One of the reasons why is because he's one of the best shooters in the league. Now, what I love about James Harden's shot is he's got a lot of unique principles to it. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to break those down and see if you can add some of those principles to your game. Because if you can, the odds of you shooting a higher percentage are pretty good. Now, before we jump into it, I also want you to go follow me on the Arbit app. Link in the description down below because what we do is we run polls, and this is exactly how I know what videos to make for you guys. So I just ran a poll, Clay Thompson versus James Harden in the Arbit app. James Harden won, that's why we're doing the video today. So all you gotta do, follow in the link, or hit the link in the description, download Arbit, and then follow me at Shop Mechanics. And also as a little extra bonus, I've got a free exclusive shooting workout inside my bio. So you just gotta click that link and get direct access right away. So, as we jump into James Harden's jumper, the very first thing that I want to talk about is his feet, right? His foundation, his base. Now, a lot of players, you know, are going to be slightly different how they kind of, you know, set up their feet. But if you look at James Harden, when he's getting ready to shoot, most of the time he's got a nice tilt off to the side. Now, you always want to tilt to your dominant, or away from your dominant side. So if I'm a right-handed shooter, I'm going to tilt to the left. Because James Harden's a lefty, he's going to tilt to the right just like this. Right? So even if you're trying to get James Harden's form, if you're a righty, you don't want to tilt the same way as him. You want to tilt the opposite direction. Right? So for the sake of demonstration, because I'm a right-handed player, I'm going to kind of do everything like I'm a righty. But keep in mind, James is going to be exact opposite. Right? So with the feet, the whole key here is that number one, you're going to start a little bit more narrow than you're probably used to. And number two, you're going to tilt both feet to where they're parallel with each other. So you notice if we come in close here, we can see that my foot, my right foot is closer to the three-point line and my left foot is further away from the three-point line. Now this is what James Harden's really good at because what happens is by tilting those feet, as I bring my shot up, it allows me to bring my elbow underneath the basketball and then that way everything's in perfect alignment towards the basket. So the feet tilt, although it's you know, something that's kind of small, minute, doesn't seem like a super big deal, actually has a massive chain reaction through your body. So the very first thing you want to do is experiment with that. You know, you might have kind of a bigger tilt like James Harden, you might have a smaller tilt, but you want to experiment and play with it and see where your tilt's going to be. All right, so sticking with the foundation, the next thing that you notice with James Harden's jumper is that his heels are always off the ground. Meaning that as he's getting ready to shoot, he's getting ready to load off the power pads of his feet up here on the balls of his feet, and his heels are off the ground. Now this is important because it gives him a natural springboard into his shot. So you notice that as he's getting ready to shoot, and as his hips and his knees flex, so can his heels, right? If your heels and ankles can flex at the same time, that's going to allow all three joints to work together and so they can spring and extend. Now what you see with a lot of players is when they're getting ready to shoot, they might plant their heel and plant their heel, and by doing that, the ground and energy takes all of their momentum and then it's really hard to regather. This is why James Harden gets really good pop on his jump shot, even though he doesn't jump very high. Right? Because as he loads, he's keeping those heels off the ground, he gets all three of those joints working together. So I always like to think about, pretend like you're on a diving board or a springboard, right? If you're getting ready to jump off a diving board, rarely are you going to plant your heels into it and then try to get that energy, right? You're springy, you're quick, you're on the balls of your feet, you want to do the exact same thing when you're shooting. So if you can experiment with that, it's probably going to help you out. All right, so the next thing we want to talk about is as we move up the body, we're going to talk about our hand positioning on the basketball. Now, James Harden used to keep his hand more on the side of the basketball, but now he's started to transition a little bit more towards the top. Now, for this, it kind of it just depends on what works best for you, right? You might like your hand on the very top of the ball, kind of more like James Harden. You might like it more on the side of the ball, kind of like Steph Curry. You might like it behind the ball like this, or you might like it somewhere in between, right? But for James Harden, what I like about having his hand on top of the ball, or kind of topish side sometimes, is as he brings it up into his shot, it's already directly underneath the basketball, right? And it, doesn't, it makes it so it doesn't force his elbow out. What we see if you try to put your hand behind the basketball a lot of times, is it's gonna push that joint, it's gonna push that elbow out. So as you try to come through, your elbow's gonna point off to the side. So one really simple tweak and fix is to put that hand on top of the basketball and just try to lock your wrist early as it's coming up. That way you can snap it forward. So play around with hand position. See what works best for you. Like James Harden, it might be more on the top or it might be a little bit more on the side. All right, so the next thing I love about James Harden's jump shot is his high release. Meaning as he releases the basketball, he gets his shooting arm high up on his shot. Now, a lot of times with younger players, we're trying to get more power, right? So the further you scoot out, the lower your release becomes because you're trying to push it. But James Harden has that optimal release, whereas he's getting ready to release the basketball, his shooting elbow is above his eye line, right? And this is really important because the better arc you get on the basketball, the better chance it has of going in, mathematically speaking. 
right? So this is super important, and it's something that James Harden's really, really good at. And it doesn't matter if he's shooting off a of separation, if he's shooting off of the pull-up, catch and shoot, whatever it is. He's really good at making sure that when he catches and releases, he gets that shooting elbow above his eye. Now, with that being said, you can have too high of a release, right? We don't want to skyrocket it all the way back behind our ear because that means that we're going to be getting too much arc and not enough touch on the shot, right? So just like James Harden, think about finding that optimal release when the ball comes out of your hand. You want that elbow just barely above your eye line, somewhere right in here. If you can do that, you're immediately going to hit more shots. All right, so the next thing that's super interesting about James Harden's shot is he gets very low lift, meaning he doesn't jump very high most of the time. Now, this is really interesting because we kind of grew up, you know, thinking that you always had to jump really high on your shot. Everybody was saying, get more lift, get more lift. But really, it doesn't matter quite as much as people think. As long as you have your heels off the ground like we talked about before, you don't need to jump super high on your shot. Now, with that being said, there's going to be times where you're going to want to jump higher, and it's going to be a little bit different. Like, if you're shooting in the mid-range, if I come in here and I'm contested, right, a guy's with a hand in my face, there's where I might want to lift and get more jump on my shot, right? But on the three-point line, if I'm catching and shooting or shooting off of a step back or whatever it is, just like James Harden, you don't need to jump really, really high. And that's something that I see screw up a lot of player shots if they focus on getting too much lift because what happens is they jump, they hang in the air, and it kind of loses all that upward momentum. Right, if you look at some of the best shooters in the NBA right now, guys like James Harden, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, a lot of them don't jump very high, and it's a key that allows you to transfer that momentum through your body and into the basketball. So think about your own lift, right? Sometimes jumping higher isn't always better. All right, so the next thing that you notice is James Harden has a low shot pocket, meaning that as he's getting ready to shoot the ball, instead of keeping it high up here by his shoulder or by his chest, he loads it lower, right? Sometimes it's by his waist, sometimes it's even all the way down by his thigh. Now, a lot of coaches and players will tell you that you shouldn't do this because it's slower, you'll get your shot blocked, you'll never be able to get it off, right? But if you look at a guy like James Harden, he consistently loads lower in that shot pocket, but he's still able to get off shots in pretty much any situation. Step backs, pull backs, separation, it doesn't matter. So it's not slower, you just have to make sure that you load it quicker, right? So as I'm catching the ball, if I'm trying to lower the shot pocket, if I go slow down, it's gonna make me wanna go slow up as I explode out of it. But instead, if I catch and I go quick down and quick up, that's gonna, number one, speed up my shot. Number two, give me great rhythm to get into my jumper, right? So everybody's gonna be a little bit different. It kinda depends on what works best for you, but I would highly recommend loading it at least down by your waist or a little bit further up. Or if you're even younger, you can load it down. There's nothing wrong with loading it all the way down by your knee if you're in you know, third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade, somewhere around there. So, don't worry about loading low because that actually gives you more momentum, more power into your shot. And it's something that really help, helps James Harden's set point timing, helps him get a lot of that spring and that pop on the outside jumper. All right, so next let's talk about James Harden's guide hand. Now you notice that kind of the tried and true way that coaches always talk about is on your follow through, you want your guide hand with your fingers pointed up towards the ceiling. Now this works for some players, but it kind of gives you a split second where the ball's not guided on the snap of your release. So you'll notice that a lot of players, and James Harden included, is he actually flexes his guide hand forward when he's shooting. So instead of releasing with it straight up like this, as he comes through, he's gonna snap his guide hand forward with his shooting hand. So if you can see that, I'm going guide hand forward with my shooting hand. So if you can flex it forward, a lot of times what that does is it allows you to guide the ball just for that nanosecond longer. But again, because shooting is like, you know, a game of like millimeters and inches, sometimes just that little extra guide can make a huge difference. So what you wanna do is you wanna try it out, right? You can either have your four fingers facing towards the ceiling, like traditional coaches teach a lot of times, or you can have your thumb facing towards the ceiling. So as I finish and I come through, if I rotate with my thumb facing towards the ceiling, sometimes that gives me that little extra guide, just like James Harden. All right, so now we've kinda of gone all the way through his shot. Let's talk about the very last thing, and that's his middle finger finish meaning that as he's getting ready to shoot, his middle finger is the last thing that touches the ball and snaps down towards the ground. Now everybody's gonna be different here too. You might be an index finger shooter, you might be a middle finger shooter, you might be a split finger shooter, which means it comes out at the same time. The key here is that you wanna make sure that whatever finger is your dominant finger is in the center of the ball. So because James Harden's a middle finger shooter, when he loads his hand on top of the ball like we talked about earlier, he puts that middle finger right in the center. Because as he starts coming up and he rotates around, if he can get it in the center to start, then it's gonna be in the center as it snaps through towards the basket, right? And again, shooting the basketball is all about alignment. The more aligned I can be, generally the more accurate it's gonna be. So if I try to shoot, and if I lined up with my middle finger on the outside of the ball, all of a sudden if it's out of alignment, it's gonna go left or right. Does that make sense? So if you wanna think about, you can try the middle finger release just like James Harden, and this works generally best if you're a hand on top, 
or a hand on side shooter, right? If you're a hand behind the basketball, a lot of times it's really tough to get your middle finger aligned in the center of the ball. So think about it. Try the middle finger, try the index finger, see what works best for you, but just know that James Harden, boom, middle finger right in the center, snaps it down towards the ground. All right, so now we've got some drills that's gonna help you kind of get that James Harden jumper in actual game. So the very first thing we're gonna work on is a jab series. Now you can do this anywhere on the three-point line. Um, and so anytime you're doing this drill, you wanna just get reps in different spots, right? You wanna get used to attacking at different angles. So it's all gonna start by spinning the ball to yourself somewhere on the three-point line. Now on the catch, the very first one we're gonna work on is a jab and go, right? So as I spin the ball to myself, I'm gonna catch loaded like I'm getting ready to shoot, low shot pocket just like James Harden. But then here, all I'm going to do is I'm gonna throw a jab step one direction. I always like to just kind of pick the outside of the court most of the time to start. So I'm gonna jab step one direction. I wanna stay loaded. I'm gonna explode out of a rocker step for a one dribble pull up from mid range, right? This is gonna give you kind of that shifty game that James Harden has a lot. So as I come through, I'm going boom, jab, rock, one dribble pull up. Again, I'm loading my hips. I'm keeping my heels off the ground just like James Harden. And I'm launching into my shot. From there, you get your own rebound, peel out somewhere else on the three point line. Just say right here, I'm gonna spin it to myself again. This time I'm going with my outside foot again. Jab, rock, one dribble, pull up, jump shot. Again, work on staying low, staying springy when you're coming out of that jab. All right, so the next option we wanna work on is a jab and pull. So this is the idea that on the catch, we're jabbing the defender to get some space and then loading into a jump, jumper just like James Harden. So it's all gonna start the same. On the three point line, you're gonna spin the ball to yourself. Again, I'm gonna still jab with my outside foot, so I'm going with my left foot this time. So you're gonna jab to get the defender moving. Again, think about you wanna to try to get your jab step inside the free, er, three point line on this move, right? So I'm jabbing, driving my defender, and then I'm coming back and loading into my shot for that jab and pull. So again, it doesn't matter what side I'm working on. When I jab, I wanna work on driving them with my shoulders forward, and then coming back to this loaded position like I talked about earlier. Ball loaded, heels off the ground, getting ready to spring quickly. What we see a lot of the times with this drill is players will go here, it's all good, and they'll come high and they'll set the ball up on the shelf just like this, right? Remember, we wanna try to shoot like James Harden. So as I come through, I'm jabbing, then I'm loading the ball a little bit lower so I can spring all the way through. High release, middle finger down, snap it off. Again, get your rebound, peel out, shoot all around the three-point line for this one. All right, so the last one in this series is we have the pump, jab, pull. Now this is kind of a combo that we throw together. So it's all gonna start the same, spin the ball to yourself, you're gonna catch, you're gonna pump fake up, right? You're trying to raise your hips just a little bit and raise the ball above your head to get them moving. From here, you're gonna pump, then you're gonna go to an outside jab. So because I'm on the left side of the floor, I'm going a left foot jab. And then I'm coming back to a pull up jump shot. So this is the idea, a lot of times you've got a closing defender coming at you, ball comes. I'm gonna go here to get them to close this space. And then I'm gonna throw a violent jab to try to get them to slide hard. What you notice is this combination is great for breaking angles, sending guys flying, getting really, really good looks. Again, same thing as the jab pulls before. Once I throw this jab, I still gotta load, spring all the way through. Again, shoot on different spots on the perimeter, get some good reps out of it. All right, if this video helped you out, go ahead and hit that like button, and then in the comment section down below and let me know what sort of video you wanna see next. I run pretty much everything I have for a quest. That's a great place for me to get them into the Arbit app. And if you're new to shot mechanics, you definitely wanna hit that subscription button because we put out videos every week and they're all gonna get you better. And you're also gonna to wanna to get a free copy of my seven day shooting workout. You can click the button down here to get started, get instant access today because we gotta get your shot where it needs to be. Again, I'm Coach Colin Castell with Shot Mechanics Basketball. Thanks for watching and until next time, splash on.